fifth graders and anyone else who's here because I hope that the fourth, third, second, first, and kindergartners watch fifth grade videos and do fifth grade projects because why not? And I hope that fifth graders are watching all the other grade levels projects because you could do some of those fun projects too. And in honor of Mia, a student at the Fino, who sent me a picture of something that she did. Here it is. Yeah, it looks pretty cool, right? It's made out of balloons. It's pretty awesome. So in honor of what she did, I'm inspired by what she did. I decided to make emoji crafts for third, fourth, and fifth grade. Third grade has the emoji bookmark. All right. Fourth grade has the emoji flip book. All right. And fifth grade? Pretty cool, right? Don't worry about it. You got to look at it like this. And then you got to look at it like this. Agomograph. It's an agomograph. All right. So I use two opposing emotions. One's happy and one is sad. And the way that you position this, if you hang it up on a wall and as you're walking by, you see one thing. And then as you're walking from the other direction, you see the other thing. And I'm going to show you how to do this. Now, technically, all these emojis that you see here, you really don't have to make emojis. I mean, you can make a cute little fox with the ears sticking up and the whole thing. Uh, you can make Minecraft characters on each of these, right? And you could do something completely different for this too. But in honor of Mia and how awesome she's doing with her artwork, I decided to go with the emojis. So fifth graders, what you're gonna need, a pair of scissors, definitely. Ruler, definitely. Pencil, definitely. You are going to need colored markers, although you can use crayons and colored pencils too. That's perfectly fine. And last but certainly not least, you need the glue. You need a lot of glue. All right, so let me show you how to do it. First thing you need to do is you need two pieces of paper. One of those pieces of paper you're going to have to cut in half. So these are equal papers. I took this one, I folded it in half. And now I'm going to cut that piece of paper out right on that middle line because I really need them to be equal sizes. Okay. Now this is this is a 9 by 12 paper. If you could get your hands on 9 by 12 or any kind of piece of paper that's even, okay? You don't want 8 and a half by 11 cuz that half might mess you up a little bit. So this is completely even because you're going to make one inch marks on these, okay? So what I'm going to do before anything else is I'm going to take these two pieces of paper and I'm going to put my emojis on it. Okay, there's my two emojis right there. I went for opposites. Got happy, got sad. Bright background, darker background. Blue tear, pink tongue. So I like that uh, opposite sort of thing. So on one side you see something and on the other side you see it's opposite. I really like that idea with this type of project. So I'm gonna put this aside for a second. Get this big piece of paper. And what I'm gonna do is lay the ruler down on the bottom. Now this is where it really comes in handy if you have a 12 inch by nine inch piece of paper. I'm going to mark off every one inch all the way across. That is my cat's shadow. Right there like that. Now I'm going to do the same thing on this side. Every inch be as precise as you possibly can. And then you're going to combine these now. All the way across. Good habit for me is putting my pencil down 
on my top part, bringing my ruler to it, moving my ruler to the bottom part where I want it to go, my target, and that's how I usually do my pencil lines with a ruler. And okay, those are my one inch lines right there. Now we're gonna do the same for these two. Now for these guys, I'm gonna flip this one over and on the back where I could see my marks, I'm also going to make my one inch marks. Also on the top. And I'm going to make the same type of lines coming straight down. Got to be precise with this. I'm going to do the same thing for this one. more precise you are, the better it's going to tur turn out, almost said turkey, the better it's going to turn out when you go to glue them on. And you're going to be doing a lot of gluing for this project. Okay, all set. Now what you're gonna do is you're gonna cut out every one of these and you have to try to keep them in order. Again, be precise. face on this side. And I've got my face over here on this side. Okay, so the next thing you're gonna do is for this paper is you have to accordion fold this. It's an accordion fold. Well, on this line right here, I'm going to fold this down right on that line. Precision, precision, precision. That's folded down. This one is going to be folded in. So I have to go this way with it now, folding it that way. So for this, it's going to be different because this is a mountain fold because it looks like a mountain. The next one's a valley fold. The next one's a mountain fold. The next one's a valley fold. And you're going to keep going back and forth. So for this part, it's really important to keep that precision. All right. So the next one's a mountain fold again. So I got to go this way. And however you feel most comfortable folding this. You can flip it back and forth. I'm lining this up with my next line right there. You can also flip it over and go this way if you wanted to. accordion fold or a fan fold. Okay, so the next part of this is all about gluing. 
I'm going to start with my sad face here. And I'm going to glue this first part right here. And drop this guy right on top. Putting him in that one inch spot right there. Picking up any excess glue. Right to the edge. Now I'm going to skip this one. I'm going to go from here. I'm going to jump over here. If you use a glue stick, make sure you use a lot of glue off that glue stick. Skip that one, go to this one. Part is the happy face side of it are gonna go on all these spots. Now that that's all here, and I did give it a little time to dry, I have to refold the accordion fold to make sure everything is bending correctly. Precision, precision. It really counts for this one. Having a little trouble on this one right here. See on the end. And is pretty good. Oh, this is pretty good. It looks like I'm having a bit of a difficulty with this one up here. As if, it, if it's a little bit, it looks like it's got a little bit too long right there. Kind of overlapped a little bit on that one. All right. Um, if it's possible, I don't think it is, but I could try to trim it with a pair of scissors. That's going to be really, really difficult to do. And I'm leaving, I'm leaving too much of a white space in there. But it will fold better now. So I got a nice fold right there. I'm gonna open it back up. And uh, yeah, it's definitely it's definitely folding too much right there. So I'm gonna trim a little bit off off of there a little bit more. Now, even though I trimmed that off and it's all white there. I can clean that up. Let's see here. I use this. And I use the little bit of red right here. And a little bit up there. I'll clean it up a little bit. All right, and that's it. So now we can take a look at it. Okay, fifth graders, I hope you enjoyed doing your agomographs. Uh, during this one, I actually made a mistake and I embraced the mistake and I saw it and I corrected it. I actually switched these two. So I had to switch them back. Thank goodness I got it in time. And uh, yeah, so I actually made an error in that project. I hope you saw it. And uh, I'm not afraid to show you that I am you know, mistake prone. 
Uh, but like I always told you, you got to embrace the mistakes. Uh, you got to own it. Don't let the mistake own you. That way you can learn from it, right? So it doesn't beat you down. So I guess there's one last thing to do here and we'll get going. All right. Still haven't seen Bob. He's got to be around somewhere. I don't know. All right, guys. Till next time. Thank you.